Hey guys, Bobcat Buffer here with another frontline disc golf form review. Today we have Grant. We're going to have Grant on the right here, Dan on the left. Now, Grant does a four step walk up. I cut out his first step just to I can match it up easier with Dan's form because Dan only, a, Dan only does a three step walk up. I'll go ahead and I will uh, run through this really fast and then I'll back it up with some review. So first thing I'm going to say is you made me delete my first bullet. I always keep my first bullet here that says get your left hand off the disc. You already have your left hand off the disc. Um, now it's there hovering, but it's not on the disc, which is, as long as it's not touching the disc, I don't care. Now you'll see that Dan does touch the disc. A lot of the pros do, Paul McBeth does, like that, but they have an open hand and they're touching it just for um, angle purposes. And as soon as they take that first step, they take their hand off the disc. That's the important part. If you leave your left hand on the disc too far, when you go to do your reach back, the disc follows the left hand and you begin to round. But we don't have to worry about that because you're not doing that. Well, I already said the I cut out your first step of your next step, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with the four step walk up. It's just different timing for different per, uh, people. And with that said, your timing is a bit off. so. Um, going into a three-step X step might be something you want to look into, but it's all preference. Then there's like James Conrad who does like nine steps. So, okay. Uh, so you look away from your target almost like immediately. Right there, you're no longer looking at your target. You'll notice that Dan looks at his target. Um, Dan looks at his target until his front shoulder no longer allows him to look at his target. In your X step, you want to land less on your toe. You're still going to be landing on like your toe and the ball of your foot, but you want your foot to be more parallel with your other foot. You'll notice in Dan's he has a little tiny X step right here and his like the ball of his foot or like it's kind of his toe but he's more flat than just his toe um, which the smaller X step allows you to keep your hips in line with your target um, and when you step on your toe this way it turns your hips which you'll see in reference. So when you land on your toe, if you are, your hips turn. Your hips turn that way. And a large part of the throw is based off your hips. So we want to make sure that those are in line with the target <clears throat> and that our hips are being engaged properly. Straighten your shoulders um, you, along with your hips. Your your shoulders turn a bit early. You'll notice that all of Dan Brooks uh, upper body is in line with the target. His hips and his shoulders stay in line the whole time until he starts uh, until he gets the end of his throw and he starts his reach back. So. Right now, your shoulders are not pointed at the target. They're pointed, like you're almost already starting your reach back a little bit, but not entirely. Um, we wanna see you start that reach back as soon as this front plant foot starts coming out of the X step. You'll notice if I drag this back and forth, it almost looks as if Dan's uh, reach back and plant foot are moving at the same motion. But you almost have the same thing. So you, so you do start it on time, 
you almost you peak early it's like you're at your peak reach back there you might be rounding a little bit too you might be coming across your body you want to make sure that you're nice and straight back towards the back of the t-pad as you can see down here um, but yeah you peak early you're, you shouldn't peak until your front foot touches down also I didn't put this on the notes over here um, but your plant foot is landing open you want this plant foot you want to land on your toe and you want to land closed and then you're gonna and then you're gonna pivot and you're this is gonna pivot this way you'll notice on Dan's or Dan his foot is closed it's not open and then after he releases the disc he pivots and he releases all that energy which is important to save your knees Great job getting your elbow out. Um, so a lot of people, they stop here. A lot of people stop right here and then they swing through. You actually do a really good job getting your elbow out past that and doing what I call breaking the, wind, like breaking the glass pane. Um, which is good, you'll see it here at Dan's. You wanna make sure that that weight is up over your front foot and you're engaging your lower body and pushing off that back foot when you do it and you want to make sure that your your elbow is out and not back what i mean by that is let me make this big on the screen real quick what I mean by that is if you're coming if you're coming out you make sure that you're out and not back if you're back you're going to release to the right, and that's what where grip lock comes in. So out, not back. Which I can't exactly tell if that's what you're doing in the video. Um, it's hard at this angle to see that, but just be weary of it. Um, your shoulders are opening up too early, and you're looking up too early. So. So you're getting this elbow out, your shoulders are already opening up, which this is like one of the hardest things to do that really will like separates the pros from the ams. Like watch Dan, his elbow is out and his shoulders are still parallel with his target. It's crazy. Like I, I can't even, I don't even think I can pull up another video of somebody who gets their elbow out this far. Um, and you also want to keep your head down don't look up at your target until this back shoulder here pushes your chin forward. So you'll see Dan. If Dan doesn't look away from his target until his front shoulder pushes his head back. And then he continues to look straight. He just trusts his body to line up the shot until his back shoulder pushes his head forward. He was, uh, what was it? Wasabi. I think it's an old golf saying, um, oh, that Will Shoestrick used. Um, he said, the person who looks up the fastest watches their ball go out of bounds, um, or their disc go out of bounds. So I think I think that was something I heard Will Shoestrick say way back when. Um, okay, so also make sure you're taking a bigger last step. You want to be able to make sure that you're weight is transferring from that back foot to the front foot and if you don't have a big enough last step you're not gonna execute that weight shift properly you want to make sure that your weight is in the middle here which you're almost centered and then as you come through you really want to push off that back leg and not just lift it up. You'll notice how like 0% of Dan's body weight is on that back leg anymore. But yeah, it's like you don't commit to the weight shift. Um, you're just like lifting up that back leg at the end. I mean, 
The only other thing I ever check is I look at this first frame right here where the disc is out of your hand to make sure that it's in a fist and that it's not opened up. If you're opening it up, that means you're letting the disc go, um, which you don't want to do. You want to let the disc rip out of your hand. So that's good that your hand is still closed there. So that's all I got for you. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it helped you out. And we'll see you out there.